Hey everybody, so on Simple and Traditional today, we are going, if you're like me, you've got, uh, you encounter uh, shed antlers out hunting and scouting and uh, berry picking, whatever. Well, you can take the shed antlers and we're going to make lights out of them today. We don't have enough elk uh, to do that today, but you can certainly uh, <coughs> do it with deer, uh, mule deer, whitetail. And they don't have to be shed antlers. You can uh, uh, purchase them off of multiple areas. Uh, eBay, although I probably wouldn't buy them off of eBay because everybody there seems like is looking for prime dollar for what they have. But definitely Craigslist or pawn shops, uh, even antler, <coughs> excuse me, antler retailers, uh, farms that raise elk or deer. Uh, are going to purchase and sell antlers by the pound. So uh, I'm going to clear the table, clear the workbench, and we'll get started. So here we've got what we will end up with. This is the uh, the lamp, all assembled and wired. You can plug this in to any household outlet and uh, stick a bulb in or shade. It's sitting for a little while bulb in it and shade and it's a that's a table lamp. These are real easy to build once you know what you're facing and uh, the process to do it and uh, that's what our end product is going to look like. Now here we've got some shed antlers. These are probably going to be a little on the small side. Actually I'll take that back. These are cutoffs. Uh, these are a little on the small side. That's a shed. And you can even buy them from old taxidermy. These were mounted. And uh, you're going to want several. Um, you're going to want to get a few on hand so that you can... So you're going to be laying everything out and assembling it. And uh, you're going to want a few to pick, for, pick and choose from so you can get the symmetry right. Um, and the, the layout right. So we'll be back with, uh, with what we've come up with. So this is, <coughs> excuse me, this is the layout that I came up with. I like how it, how it looks. They're a thicker antler. Um, they are cutoffs. Um, I can't remember where I got them. But <coughs> basically you're going to round those off later on. Um, basically you want to just kind of get the, get the, the feel for the layout and make sure everything is sitting fairly level. And then I use just electrical tape. To hold everything together until we start doing pilot holes and uh, so once you're happy with the shape and the symmetry next step is to start doing some pilot holes and we'll get that out and, and ready to go so my camera battery died and the drill battery was going dead but uh so i jumped ahead a little bit here but what i did is i just got some of these uh these are cabinet screws inch and three quarter and what I did is just use a drill index to figure out which one they were, which hole they fit really well, and they drop into a 5.32nd. So I was trying to use an 8th inch drill bit. I can't find it. So we're going with a 9.64th, and that seems to be working well. Um, so once you find out your drill size, you get it out, you pilot drill through uh, first. Go ahead and knock one in here. want to start, you can see all these that have been drilled, I pilot drill them and then I counter, counter sink them and run the screw in, but you want to drill in eyeball a straight hole and you want to intercept it where it's all touching together. So like right there would be really well, just turn it in right there. And don't put your finger right behind it and don't drill through it. I've almost been there with trying to do.
and drill all the way through. That's not a big deal, as you can see here, probably on this one. We went all the way through. That's not a big deal. We're going to address that in a little bit. So we got the pilot. Now we counter. So let the screw head recess in a little bit. Even if it's high a little, you can address that. That one's sucking. Should be good. Now I take one additional measure. Take screw. Take a little bit of glue. Uh, I really like the super glue, but this one's locked up. This one should work just fine. Cut the threads. Kind of a Loctite for you screw. So this is where you should be at, at this stage. Um, all the holes are drilled, countersunk, glued, screws, and it should be really sturdy. Now I'm going to let this one set up probably about 12 hours or so before I go messing with it too much more and then we're going to start addressing any high screws, screw heads that you have and then dealing with here where they came through and like here where we've got the antler has split from the screw poking through and then here this was a rattling antler and uh, we're going to fill that hole and we're going to cap these off or deal with these, make these look like caps, make them look like sheds. So, we'll be back.
Okay, so I lost some footage. So I'm just going to go over what I've done recently. Now, next step is you're going to drill a bunch of holes. And you're going to drill a bunch of holes <coughs> in and you're weaving. What you're planning out is weaving in and out essentially the wire that's going to be coming through. <coughs> now I took this and I found where I want my wire to come out. It's going to come out right here. So I found the point, like this point right here. I knew I didn't want to be off as far as if I came down from the top, I didn't want to miss. So I drilled these two points first so that I had the right angles so that the drill wouldn't hit anything and I wouldn't have any snafus with that and then I went from there and I chased it down I don't know if you can see down through that one this one shoots out comes out here and then it zigs back in comes out here let's blow all this out and then tucks back in and goes out through there and what you want to make sure also like this one we're going to have to drill that down a little bit you want to make sure that your wire is going to sit below the top of the antler and there so basically that's what you want to do you want to uh, plan out and I used I used an assortment of regular uh, drill bits and I've got these as well <coughs> like you're gonna do they work on this I've got that one so I've got these two this one I use a lot um, what is that foot and I've got this one too this one is really handy if you're doing elk antlers uh, but they both work out really well and basically that's what you're doing you're just cross drilling in and out you're weaving in and out uh, the plot the, the area where you want the uh, the wire to pass through and eventually you'll pop out up here uh, you want to go ahead and like well let's go let's go ahead and blow all these holes out and I'll come back okay so cleared all the holes out. What you're going to need next for the next steps is cord set, the on and off socket. I go for the pull chain style because around here I can't find anything that's just a two way, an on off. Uh, it's either a, a pull chain style or it's a three way. And I hate three ways. <coughs> And then you're going to need the lamp harp. And you're going to need some, uh, th this threading goes into the bottom of the socket. And you're going to mount that into the, uh, into the antler. Uh, if you can see that. Into the antler up there. So you're going to need some of that. You, like I said, you can get it in a kit. But the only kits I've seen here uh, are three-way uh sockets. So each cord You're going to plot out about how far yeah, you want to come out about there. Right, there. So right about here will give us some leeway. So I'm going to mark this and we'll start feeding it through. If you can see there, I marked it with some electrical tape where I want to stop. And we have fed it through the first hole. And now, it's just a matter of weaving it through. you do 
if you can see that right there, you do want to take some care that you don't strip it. The bone becomes really sharp on the casing of the wire. The insulation. And it could strip it open if you're doing a lot of weaving in and out. So bear that in mind. Oops. Bend. Okay. Make sure that still looks good. Okay. I'll go in again. All right, I'm going to thread this through, and uh, we'll be back at the top. Okay. So there were <coughs> at least three more holes. They were just too sharp of a bend. I had to go through and take a burring bit and open them up because the, when you feed them back in. Or into the next hole, the, uh, the bend was just so stinking sharp. So, just say it again. If you're going to do any drilling, any grinding, any any anything on the bone, definitely want to wear a respirator. Okay. So, we got her routed in. Got quite a bit coming up, up and out. And, uh, oh, looks like we got a little bit to deal with there. Let's see? That poking through there, there. You want it all underneath the bone. Like that. Okay, so I think we're going to call that a day. It's about 14 degrees out here. Um, tomorrow we'll address the holes, the holes, and setting the thread. And I'll show you how to do that. I hope you can see that. We're going to address the holes <laughs> and set the thread, set the uh, I right, cut that down. I cut that uh, all thread, I guess. Not really. But that threaded stud, we're going to cut it down and we're going to set it, fill the holes. So we'll pick it up tomorrow. All right. So next phase in the antler lamp is plugging the holes, and for that we're going to be using a two-part epoxy. Um, highly, I got this off of. Uh, an auction site. Uh, I think you can get it through any taxidermy companies. Um, <coughs> but you definitely want to go with the uh, epoxy that's for taxidermy. So now you're going to take equal portions of part A and part B and knead them together. I would highly recommend going with a taxidermy epoxy because if you try and go craft store uh, filler or moldy clay, something like that, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to regret it. Uh, this stuff is made not to shrink back. The, uh, trying to save a buck and go with the uh, craft store stuff, that stuff does shrink back and you're going to be sorely disappointed. <coughs> you want a glass of water, or at least a container of water, on hand for this next part. And you're just going to knead these two together until they're thoroughly incorporated with one another. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Alright. We're gonna break off a little chunk. You're gonna stuff it in. Okay. You're gonna put 
push it around. It'll start melting or blending in to the antler. <coughs> and that's what the water's for. Next. Kind of helps blend it out. Basically, you're hiding the repair. I like doing body work and using Bondo. Don't use that either, that will shrink back. Okay. Get it level where you like it. And we'll come back and sand that a little bit, but you want it pretty close. <coughs> and on to the next one. You don't want it perfectly smooth and level. I mean, if you're in a point where it, like we're in a point where there's a lot of burrs, some little ridging is not going to hurt it. But if you're out here where it should be fairly level, probably should. But right in here, we can deal with some burrs. Yeah like that and I'll knock a few more of them out okay I think we got them all we even got the big one where the hole was for rattling rattling sleeve and down underneath where that big chip that was not a big deal and even went over where you could see like the screw just cover those up and once you've got that done the next step I already trimmed down that sleeve we're going to set the sleeve with the same epoxy so. screwdriver kind of push it down into the threading hole or the distance there between the threads of the yellow and then we'll build some up off of the yellow onto the threads you're going to leave yourself at least probably that much for the uh socket you want to make sure you sit in oops pretty low it's going to be a problem if you're not and it's nothing you can once this stuff sets you're done I'm going to wrap that up, and uh, once I get done with this, I'll do the other side, <coughs> but we're going to let it cure for 24 hours, and we'll be back and sand it. Okay, so this has had 24 hours, it's all set up, nice and dry, that's locked in, 
hard it is a rock. So now your next step is going to be um, paint. You want oil based paint and it's not just brown or it's not just tan. Get a couple of different ones like here I've got burnt umber, Van Dyke brown, burnt sienna, tend not to head to that one, that one's a little too red, and raw umber. You can see here I've got them on a <coughs> little uh, coffee can lid, and I've got them spread out. And then you're going to want some lacquer thinner, and you're going to drizzle that in there with, with it on the side. I use a fan brush, I think it works best because uh, it doesn't put anything on heavy but now you just dab in get a little bit of color on and you can put a lot if you get a lot on it's not a big deal then you just try and camouflage it and this is kind of the Bob Ross technique of uh, antler painting if you will it's going to kind of daub it in Camouflage it. So I'll dip, bleed one out here. Get some color loaded up and thin it down. Hit it with a thinner. And you're going to carry the diluted color, kind of like a trans mid coat and a transparent color. And you're going to bring it. Big heavy blob is fine. Just so gonna come back over it with the thinner. If you get a spot that just won't kind of move, load a little thinner on, a little more thinner, there, like that, and then carry that thinned out color. Touch up a few spots, you know. Just carry it out and see like how it's kind of wider in here. We're just going to carry that out. And this is just the first coat. We're going to lock this in. I forgot to pick up some clear. So tomorrow I will have to pick up. semi-gloss clear and then we're going to lock this this phase in this color phase in and then you do the same thing over the top of that clear because if you keep hitting this with thinner it's just not it's going to keep bleeding it out so we're going to lock it in
keep plugging along on it and we'll uh, kick the camera back on before I clear it and repeat the process. So there's phase one. Not bad. Coming together. Now, tomorrow, <coughs> we'll lock that in with a uh, semi gloss. Clear. Put it up in there. And that'll lock that phase in, and then we'll do the process again. Okay? And you can leave that out uh, without being covered. It's an oil based. It'll stay fluid for quite a while. So, we'll be back tomorrow, but you won't see that. That'll be just the next clip. Okay, so I did, <coughs> excuse me, so I did actually have some clear. <coughs> this is a satin clear, not a semi gloss. And cleared it, let that dry, and then went through, did my second uh, camouflaging, and I think we're. I think we're good. I think, uh, it's going to be very difficult at first glance to see any of the <laughs> any of the screws and any of the holes. And uh, hit it with another coat of satin clear, buff it down with some steel wool, and uh, and then we'll wire it up. So I'm going to go ahead and throw on the second coat of clear, and uh, we'll come back and wire in. <clears throat> okay, for the next bit, we took the socket apart. The base just screws on. You've got to back out a little set screw right there. Thread the base on and then lock in your set screw. Now, these are going to be some short leads. You can see the connectors are right there. And they've only got to go a little ways. So, we're going to nip these down and we're going to put some connections on it. Be right back. Okay, so I've cut the wires down, bared them, got our terminals on. I'm going to go ahead and solder these. When they cool down, we'll slide shrink wrap over them, and we'll be back after that's done. Okay, connections are heat shrunk, um, connected to the terminals on the socket. I'm going to slide the sleeve back over it. Let's see. Cardboard. And there we go. Set that in. Just kind of rocks and it's pressure fit. Like that. Just like that. Okay, I'm going to flip it over, do one more coat. And I'll be back. <clears throat> okay, so one thing you don't want to do is screw up like I did and forget to put the base of the harp before you put the base of the socket on. So I take it all apart. These are a bugger to get out through the bottom, but we did it. Base is on, of the harp is on now before <coughs> the base of the socket. Wire it back up and then we'll finish our clear coat. Finished product. I think it looks pretty good too.